Hi, good morning and uh, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining us today for this uh, webinar um, hosted by several nines. My name is Jean Jérôme and I'll be the host of the session today. If you have any questions uh, throughout um, the next uh, the next while, feel free to uh, ask them in the chat box or even better in the question section of your control panel, which you should see on your on your system. Um, hello, uh, Rian. I'm John by Rian Nolan, who is our um, guest speaker today. Uh, thanks for taking the time today, uh, Rian, to to speak to us. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, I hope everyone can see uh, Rian. And uh, the topic is um, all around the DevOps guide to database infrastructure automation for e-commerce. And uh, I let uh, Rian um, cover that in just a minute. But before we get started with that, I just wanted to ask um, all of you in the audience a quick question. Uh, and that is just to get an idea of um, of uh, the sort of resources that you have in house uh, in your in your organization. And the question is uh, whether you have a dedicated uh, database administrator um, who works in your um, in your office in your organization. It'd just be great to know whether you have such a resource um, or not. If you could take just a couple of seconds just to to answer that poll, that'd be great. Thanks very much. Great, thank you. Um, I close the poll now and share the results. And it's very different to the session we had this morning um, <laughs> because it seems that everyone uh, this afternoon, or, or, or uh, by this morning, I mean European time. So of course we are in uh, in the morning time uh, US. But um, uh, earlier today we we had um, uh, the. The other, the other way, we had more people without uh, DBAs in the office, so that's really interesting. Uh, I don't know what your yeah. thoughts are, um, Rian. Um, firstly, I'd say these people in the webinar is very lucky to have a resource like that in their office. Um, it makes things certainly a lot easier, I think. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. And with that um, said, Rian, I'll um, hand over to you. Thank you very much. Um, guys, thank you for joining uh, me today. I will just uh, discuss with you briefly my um, experience with database infrastructure automation from a DevOps point of view. <clears throat> so just briefly, I work for Food Panda and Hello Food. Uh, we're the fastest um, growing food delivery ordering company in the world. We're active in about 50 countries now. And our uh, founding company is Rocket Internet. Uh, they also have a number of companies all over the world, like Lazada, Zalora, um, uh, Groupon, uh, My City Deal, all of these type of things. And um, in today's uh, webinar, I'll discuss with you e-commerce infrastructure challenges. And I'm going to use a previous company I worked at, Africa Internet Accelerator as an example, and I put a link to the case study at the bottom and I encourage you to read it. It's not very long, but it's a very interesting story. We also discussed provisioning highly available environments across multi-server and multi-availability zones, if you use AWS. Um, then we'll go into building and maintaining configuration management systems, such as Puppet. Uh, we'll talk about enabling self-service infrastructure to internal dev teams. Then I'm going to show you some, <clears throat> some health and performance monitoring tools that I use. And in the second last topic, we'll discuss elastic scaling and automating failure handling. And there I'll show you some code examples that you're free to use. And the last point will be disaster recovery. And once again, I'll provide you with some code examples that you can make use of immediately. So about <clears throat> a year and a half ago, I worked for Africa Internet Accelerator. We had three e-commerce stores, a furniture store, a fashion and shoe store, and then a baby clothing and baby toy store. And all of these three ventures sat on one cluster. Um, and about a month before I got married, on the Saturday evening, we had a split brain. Uh, we had a split brain with a self-hosted and self-managed uh, MySQL Galera cluster uh, behind HA Proxy, and uh, we managed that with Puppet. 
Um, what happened the next couple of days is I had to tell my wife a month before we get married that I need to fly to China for a couple of days to help the developers um, and, my, and then help me to get our data back. So what happened is um, one node gave some problems and we took it out of the cluster and then Puppet thankfully started it again with an MTG com address. And so this node happily joined the big cluster on its own, acting as its own cluster, and HF proxy just delegated queries to all of these res to all of these machines. And so we had some databases, actually all our data was um, was nullified. And by the time we we found out what was actually happening, uh, it, about six hours had passed. So the first thing um, that we did is we needed to track our data. We needed to find out what orders were placed, uh, which of the buyers uh, added new products, uh, which marketing campaigns were going out, what version staging databases were at, and what tickets and uh, things they were testing. Um, <clears throat> and what we used is we used our logs, our email logs, um, some uh, newsletter signups, uh, we used um, our call center logs to get all of these data and start recreating um, our orders. Um, everything was gone, like I told you, our time, um, the orders, the changes to the staging databases. And what we discovered is it's not really a question of money, but it's also a question of time, because every single department was affected um, by this downtime. So uh, luckily, we were quite an agile team. And what we did is we restored a backup from about uh, nine hours ago that we could fully trust and we knew at uh, what point in time we were. So the websites were up quickly, back up and running. But we had all of these orders that were placed that we didn't know who placed them, excuse me, or when. Um, so what we did is we took the faulty data, imported it into another database, and we, we played with it there. We extracted all the data, the SKUs, the new orders, the new customers, everything we extracted there while the rest of the site just carried on taking orders. Um, you can see that we were quite busy at AIA because a lot of our <coughs> database operations were write and updates. <coughs> Excuse me. So it was very write heavy. Uh, our workflow was something like this. We put our code into GitHub, even the Puppet code. Then we use Capistrano to check this out and deploy it to the Puppet Master, uh, the regional Puppet Master, or the web servers or the database nodes. Nginx for our web server. PHP 5 and Ruby um, scripts to, to run our applications. We had Percona Extra DB. Couchbase for our sessions. Um, Solar we used as a search engine. And then Gluster FS. Um, we used as a file storage where we could put all of these images and resources. And then finally, Puppet was used to orchestrate all of this around the environment. <clears throat> now, this is a screenshot before we installed Cluster Control. Um, after we, we found Cluster Control, it took about a week to find an application that we could use to help us manage this database layer. Um, and you can see it made a massive difference. Our writes and inserts and deletes actually went up. Uh, we were able to work more on this database, but as you can see from the graph above, everything just ran a lot smoother. So a couple of things that I've learned <clears throat> is if you find yourself in a tight spot, look for help. Look for an application that will help you immediately and just get you out of that dark days, you know? Um, one of the things that I had a problem with <clears throat> excuse me, is that I could not control cluster control 100% of Puppet. And I really had trouble letting go of that feeling. But I realized that if I have to sacrifice 20% of my Valhalla, my heaven, you know, to get 100% of my problem solved, then it sounds like a real good deal. So the other alternative was actually uh, doing interviews, hiring a DBA that knows, um, first of all, Galera, MySQL that knows something about Puppet being in a distributed environment. And then the quickest solution was just to uh, buy an enterprise license for cluster control. So um, also another thing that I've learned is experience is not a bad thing. 
necessarily. It's just the way the cards are dealt and you make of it what you can. And then also what I've learned is to cre recreate these disasters in a sandbox environment so that it's not a new thing when you see this happening because you've done this before, you know exactly what to do, you know where your backups are, you've seen the scenario again. And then a striking thing is after a cluster control, our workflow didn't really change that much. It still stayed exactly the same as it was before we used cluster control. Just the insight that we got into that database layer, we didn't have a DBA, it was just uh, me and a couple of sysadmins and developers, and we all did our best, but certainly we don't know as much about databases uh, than a DBA. Then, um, <clears throat> next slide is provisioning highly available environments across multi-server and multi-availability zones. So here at Food Panda, we use um, Amazon quite heavily, and we make use of cloud formation templates, and then we create these stacks in a, in a VPC, a virtual private cloud. Uh, I'll show you later on how to do that. Then we pass these instances off to Puppet. Factor and Hira gather some facts in there. Uh, about these instances. Puppet manifest then uh, rolls it out and that's our hardware stack. So even if you use a virtualized uh, service provider like Amazon or Rackspace or, uh, or just a hardware stack of your own, it doesn't matter. This is a drop-in replacement. It'll float on, on, any, on any container. I've given you some links and on purpose I've sent you to AWS CloudFormation templates. Those are already made templates that you can just edit very quickly, get you up and running. And then also there's a link to the Forge on Puppet Labs. So you do not need to write all of your Puppet modules from scratch. You can just go and download some modules and play around with it, see if it will fit in your environment. If it doesn't, you can make some modifications and that will get you going pretty, pretty quickly.